coming in last place as Mafia in the morning. I don't know how expected this is or if it came off as a shock to you. That's not for me to decide or determine. I still remember the negative reception in the morning had back when it was released three years ago. And I must confess, I was part of that. Yep, I was part of the people who didn't like it. Actually scratch that. I actually hated in the morning at first listen. I was just shocked and not the good kind. I was appalled. I was wondering if JYP accidentally released the wrong song under the wrong groove. And when it ended I was like what the actual quack is this? The melody, raps and styling were just so weird to me. And the choreography was. My first thought in 2021 was that it was cringy. Now that I've learned part of it I can tell it is in fact pretty hard. But the point I'm trying to make is. It wasn't likable at first listen. And I can't say I'm not surprised that people were not having it. However, my mind definitely changed when the mama performance of that year happened. That performance was just insane, especially with Ryu Jin's solo part and the remix, and I certainly started liking In the Morning a lot more compared to when it first came out. But nevertheless, I still have to agree with the general public on something. Itzy, please never do this again. Here's a fun fact. I don't actually hate sneakers. Never did. Never felt the need to either. Because that's a valuable waste of time. It is far from being the best Itzy song. But it's not as downright terrible as some people make it out to be. And I know you were caught humming put my sneakers on at least once while doing kitchen work or yard work. Because the song is in fact quite catchy. And I loved seeing the girls all cheerful in the music video and the studio tune performance too. And I like seeing my favorite groups happy so I was happy too. Plus long-haired Ryujin and Barbie Yuna comeback was a bonus point for the era. And while the royal concept was not utilized in a way most people wanted, I actually quite love the symbolism the girls used in the MV with sneakers representing liberation from confinement. That being said, sneakers didn't leave a very long-lasting impression on me either, because after a while I forgot the song existed, but I never had any strong negative feelings or emotions for it. She is a song, not completely awful, but not as show-stopping as other past Itzy title tracks either. I know I know, how the heck is Loco ranking that low? Look, I loved Loco just as much as anybody else did when it came out. An iconic intro, enough variation in the bass line and instrumental to keep the song upbeat, a full vocal chorus, a killer dance break and powerful outro. In other words, a song that ticked off the list of classic itzy music elements. And duh I was attempting the dance break while doing random dances in my basement until I actually learned it two and a half years later. But Loco, I don't know. I guess it ranks so low because I wasn't super obsessed with it after a week or so. I enjoyed it from time to time over the years, often dancing to the song too. And I don't discriminate anyone who has it in their top three. But it never reached a point where I was binging the song on repeat. Or maybe the reason why everyone loved Loco so much is because they found it so much better than in the morning. And stuff like that often gives me the ick. All rambling aside, I like it. Just not as much as the neighbor next door. And for the ones whose faces are still frozen from shock at something like Loco ranking 7th, think of it as a reconfirmation of how good Etsy title tracks are. Overhated when it first came out and for what? Nothing. Exactly. Icy was the bad bitch anthem of 2019, and still is one for me up to this day. I expressed my love for Icy in my legendary first comebacks video, and I'll repeat everything I said there here. This song is a way of saying yes I know I look cold, whatcha gonna do about it? Nothing. Exactly. Every time I listen to Icy, I feel like the most confident bitch alive. And of course, Icy is the reason we had the best girl group MMA performance in the history of K-pop, and they did that as a 10 month old group. Rookies of the century indeed. And from own personal experience, this thing really hits on full volume while walking through a crowd. They keep talking. I keep walking indeed. Y'all paid Cheshire Dust and gave her none of the loco treatment. I'm only saying that because Cheshire came out after sneakers and I don't even need to mention how much distaste sneakers got because you yourself already know it. But Cheshire didn't even get a smidget of the hype Loco got, which is rather unfair cause it's a good song. Now, I will admit that when I first listened to Cheshire, I thought to myself this wasn't all that. Give me a couple days and the cheeky instrumental was spiraling through my head on a daily routinely basis. Needless to say, I fell in love with Cheshire very quickly. It's a very chicken not super duper upbeat song, but that's what makes it so charming. 
like it's easy to listen to while also keeping you excited at the same time. And of course the music video was just superb. The tannish grayish office outfits and the fuzzy white clothes for the snowy setting were simply immaculate. And the choreography honestly deserved so much more love because it's so much fun to do. Besides, you also get to shake some ass during the chorus dance. Last but not least, the bridge. I included it in my bridge video for a reason. Yuna kicking it off. Chiriyong following. Yeji's ad libs. Ryujin having vocal time to shine. And Leah finishing it. Like come on. Why didn't Cheshire get more love? Don't worry baby you got it from me. Don't mind the long silence. I just miss 2019 rookies. Like come on. The rookies of that year were just phenomenal. Itzy was amongst the first rookies to enter the industry that year. And with a groundbreaking debut like Dala Dala, we knew who would be owning 2019. And rightfully so. The self-love concept was truly made for Itzy and all five of them embodied it so well. And the song. Come on. How did we ever move on from it? That elevator sound in the intro. The bass heavy instrumental. Ryu Jin's first verse. Yeji's tough so what in my life. Chiriyong and Yuna's pre-chorus, and Leah just chilling on the conveyor belt of the airport, the magical bridge, and the neck-breaking choreography. No wonder this song sent a shockwave through K-pop when it was first released, and the song's lyrics truly resonated with many. I mean, who doesn't love a little song that talks about loving yourself for being different? Everyone that disliked the MV I guess, y'all must be sad. The best way to describe the message of Dala Dala? Thank you hussy. Oh you all are gonna have my head for this one. Listen, I too was one of the skeptical fans watching the album preview and thinking that something else on there should be the title track instead of Cake. And I definitely still thought that when I first watched the MV. But give me a single week and suddenly all I was doing in my room was going cake 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 cake. It's a piece of cake 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 cake. Cake truly grew on me with every listen. And it wasn't long before I made this one of my favorite 2023 comebacks. The song brought the goofy and silly fun back to K-pop and had classic itzy elements such as catchy lyrics, chilled raps, delightful vocals and the I don't care, I'm just a girl living her life attitude, and we had a bridge, rarity these days, I'm genuinely filled with joy whenever I listen to Cake, the reason why it also ranks so high for me is because Cake practically drove me back to my mid-Z era last super active in 2020, where I basically did one of the two, listen to the song on repeat, or doing the choreography anywhere I went, no matter how difficult it may be, is Cake the best itzy song? Well, it isn't number one on this ranking so I'd say no not really. Is it even remotely bad? Absolutely not. So stop hating her. Cause I definitely caught you all doing Yuna's shaky shake. Everyone please take a huge sigh of relief. I obviously wasn't gonna rank the banger of 4th gen lower than the top 3. Calm down. Wannabe is iconic. All of us, whether midsies, casual stands and non-fans can all agree that everything about Wannabe was iconic. From the styling to the intro, the instrumental, the chorus, the raps, and what everyone is waiting for, the choreo. Where do we even begin honestly? Ryu Jin's shoulder dance that flies out of the box called iconic. Because let me tell you, everybody in the K-pop industry and community was caught trying to learn it. The different poses the members did during the chorus, the hair flips, and the dance break. Come on. Tell me you don't get goosebumps seeing this. You had to have been there to know how much this song broke the internet in March. 2020. Like everywhere you went you saw the song itself or its choreo. In an alternate reality, Itzy would have won female performance of the year with Wannabe. Such a solid and iconic comeback that left its mark on their music. So much that even after 4 years many people still count this as their favorite Itzy title track. Honestly, it would be my favorite too. 
spot. I give the crown to another song of theirs for the number one spot. Two thousand twenty was Itzy's year, and that's another hill out of my many options of hills to die on. Wannabe for me personally caused a splash, but not shy caused a tidal wave crash on my standing journey. And needless to say, the water was refreshing. Not shy is my favorite for three main things. First of all, the concept. According to my slightly reduced K-pop knowledge, Itzy was one of the first fourth-gen girl groups to explore a cowgirl slash Wild West concept. Needless to say, the execution was flawless. The concept made the MV absolutely stunning and striking to watch, with the tannish seafoam filters and tones, the wild and colorful fashion minus the white outfits, the wanted posters, and the locations where they shot the MV are fitting as well, such as a barn or a rusty old car. Secondly, the meaning of the song. I read somewhere that the songs leading up to Not Shy were telling a story of building up your own character and finding your strengths, before getting ready to love and meet people who could be potential friends or partners, hence why you're not shy anymore. And lastly, of course the choreography. So many cool variations, iconic moments, and so much fun. I flimsily learned that within a month, because I was watching every live performance of Not Shy. No wonder I consider this comeback as my favorite Itzy era, which attributes to me loving it as my favorite Itzy title track. Oh and how could I forget? Queens I guess what made me like and appreciate sneakers a lot more was because of how experimentally questionable Checkmate was. Without sugarcoating anything, I disliked the album at first listen, except for Domino and Racer, because Domino is a sweetheart and Racer is something I can vibe with. But the other songs had me thinking only one thing, they should have stayed in the drafts. Like I am genuinely being serious when I say I haven't listened to any other songs of Checkmate aside from the two I listed since the album came out, meaning they haven't had a single play from me since 2022. Obviously I won't kill you if this is your favorite album, but for me, Checkmate was hella forgettable and definitely my least favorite album. I literally have nothing else to say about it. Well, except for a quick thank you to what I want for giving us iconic itzy TikToks such as this. <laughs> Honestly speaking, spots 9 and 8 are tied. I did not like Guess Who at all when it came out. I was not wowed by any B-sides, not even Shoot, which people deemed as one of the best Itzy songs and K-pop B-sides, and all the other songs I found tacky. So it was basically one listen and not again for a while. But those were my opinions from three years ago. Nowadays, I do vibe with some of the songs, or at least parts of them. Wait, did I just forget that I liked Wild Wild West? Damn, guess the heat in my area really got into my head. Wild Wild West was definitely the one I liked the most out of all B-sides, because gimme more of that yeehaw music. Tennis was a chill closing song, and the pre-chorus of Sorry Not Sorry is wild. But yeah, I still don't love this album and I don't think it'll happen anytime soon. Or maybe it will. Who knows? Anything is possible after all. I know everyone loves this album but personally, there were only 4 out of 9 songs that I really enjoyed. The rest I found a little meh, although there are catchy parts I like. So if they do come up on my playlist, I probably won't skip them, depending on my mood of course. Anyways, my absolute favorite from this album was So Lucky. Like I just want to scream that chorus on top of my lungs while driving through the sunset on a prairie. I have a very creative mind as you may tell. Amazing intro. Upbeat instrumental. In other words, a top class B-side that I'll definitely include in a future fun video. Listening to Chillin' Chillin' feels like eating ice cream next to a pool while either reading a magazine or chatting with friends. Love is pretty much sums up the hopeless romantic still left in this generation. And I agree. Everybody wants to love somebody. Finally. Mirror. I almost cried in the car. And I don't cry in public places or vehicles. Their voices were truly so touching. Overall. 
This is a good first full album. Not my favorite, but I can see why people like it so much. After all, I like a few songs too. No, don't be confused. I didn't accidentally write the name of a title track here. The album has the exact same title. Amazing Creativity JYP. The Not Shy EP certainly has some killer B-sides. Like that wild ass intro for Don't Give a What. Yeji's powerful vocals in the pre-chorus. The catchy post-chorus with the la la las. And the bridge too. And I don't know how many people like ID. But me? It was on repeat in late 2020. You would catch me humming the post-bridge and second verse any time of the day. Like this one was catchy and will also be included in a future video of mine. And of course I adored Be In Love from the moment I heard it. That special little music video the girls filmed is such a serotonin boost. And the vocals plus melody and rhythm of this song are simply perfection. Louder is funky. And surf is so smooth and pretty all at once. While I do love all the songs on this album a lot, I will admit I don't listen to it very often. However, if the next two EPs which I will talk about next were one album together, the Not Shy EP would definitely be in the top 5. I know I know, there's only one B-side on this album, and Want It Was Fire, radio static mixed with an E-guitar intro, a powerful opening verse, catchy raps and verses, and don't get me started on how iconic the 2019 MMA performance was, I should honestly make an analysis on why it took all of us by storm, definitely what you call a power debut, where the title track has an equally strong B-side. <laughs> Cherry is in fact one of my top favorite Itzy songs. Why? Because I loved it the most out of Itzy's five songs back in 2019 when I first started standing them. A mysterious opening, rhythmic yet empty-ish instrumental, an excitement enticing pre-chorus with two switch-ups, and a beat drop that sends a freaking shockwave with the repetitive top 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 incorporated into the instrumental? That's what you call my 2019 jam. It's summer is a fun one too. Definitely something you'd hear in a mall or while you're shopping somewhere. And finally, to mine and my sister's happiness because of how much we love Itzy's 2019 MMA performance. The IMAD remix for Wanted is on this album. If I were part of a marching band I wouldn't hesitate to convince the leader if we could perform this version at some kind of festival or graduation. Like imagine going out with a bang with such a song when you kiss academic life goodbye. Huh, maybe I should do that. <laughs> I was obsessed with this album all of December, 2022, and January and February of 2023 because it was just right for the season. Cheshire included two new songs aside from the title track, and Boys Like You. Honestly speaking, I never understood why Boys Like You got so much hate. The lyrics are catchy. Yes I just said the lyrics are catchy. The beat is so much fun, and there's this hint of nostalgia to the song as well. Like I loved Boys Like You from first listen, and I even thought to myself that this was one of Itzy's best songs released in 2022 when I finished watching the MV. That's my first time publicly admitting this by the way. Now, the B-sides. Can we talk about Snowy? Haunting and chilling yet cheeky all at once, with angelic background vocals and splendid verses. We needed a full MV for Snowy with just the white outfits used for only a few sections in the Cheshire MV. And finally, Freaky. This is such a 2000s sound and I loved every minute of it. Not gonna lie, it's actually so comforting to listen to. And the outro of that song is one of the best ones I've ever heard in K-pop. And there she was. The old itzy message. I'm in my zone. Just leave me alone. Duh I had to include it in my K-pop B-sides video. To define Cheshire in one word, it would be winter. Because all songs are perfect for the season. And y'all should really give it more love. I will get you on my shelf one day Cheshire. Just wait a little bit longer. Oh kill my doubt era, I loved you. For once JYP gave Itzy pre-releases to get everyone excited for their comeback. And if it didn't work on you, it worked on me. When Bed On Me was released, and I watched the MV for the first time, I was holding back tears the entire time. If I'm going to be frank, this is Itzy's most emotionally impactful song yet. You can feel the raw emotion in their voices throughout the song. And the MV was just, gosh it hit me right where it was supposed to. 
This is a song where a group's emotional struggles and anxieties were displayed perfectly, all while also showing their bond as a group which got them through the hard times. Like if I'm going to be honest, this song makes up the top 5 of my all-time favorite Itzy songs, knocking a few others out of the park even, and then none of my business dropped. It's sassy, and I applaud Itzy for basically telling people off. Also that pre-chorus has me hooked. Finally, after two pre-releases and a title track, we have our B-sides. Braddy's bubble-like instrumental was just chef's kiss, and that I'm too cool for you had me roaring, like yes queen. Psychic Lover brought back my beloved 2000s rock genre, and I agree with anyone who says this is one of their best B-sides. But then Kill Shot, in another life, and with a couple extra seconds because it's a short AF song, she would have been a title track for another Itzy album. Like there I also have to agree that it was title track worthy, rivaling Cake for the Spot, because that song was just cool. With the way I am talking about this album, you might be thinking, why not make it number one? One word, nostalgia's fault. I will admit it, the top three of my favorite Itzy albums are very interchangeable and I do really love all three of them equally, so it was in fact really hard to rank them all separately, and I struggled with that for like a week, but the It's Me album was my favorite for practically almost three years straight, so of course I'm gonna be attached to her, I mean the first B-side of that album was Ting Ting Ting, the fact she never blew up blows my mind, model runaway instrumental, a glorious pre-chorus, and low-pitched vocals, and some of y'all claim Itzy never had good B-sides. Following this was That's a No-No, another one that should have gone viral amongst the community. Speedy raps delivered from Yuna and Ryujin, Lee's addictive vocals in the pre-chorus and bridge, Chiriyong's I'm Gonna Keep Singing, Yeji leaving no crumbs in the chorus, and the catchy background vocal effects. What more did y'all want? And then of course came Nobody Like You. Literally one of my favorite Itzy songs ever with that nostalgic rock instrumental and such a beautiful meaning. Like come on, you can use that song for so many people dear to you and I will have my fingers crossed for the day I hopefully get to see Itzy live in concert that this will be performed. Those three definitely are my favorites from the album, but there are also parts that I really love about the other B-sides, such as the vocals in You Make Me, Lee's talking verses in I Don't Wanna Dance, and the deep vocals for 24 hours. They didn't come to play in 2020 at all. So yes, best Itzy album for me. And here's a toast to the next OT5 comeback.